Hello. Can you, can you hear me? <laughs> I can. Yeah. I feel like it helps when I do lives. I turn my Wi-Fi all the way like off. I don't know. You think I should do that? Yeah. And then I feel okay. like the connection. I turn my Wi-Fi off and then I turn it on Do Not Disturb. And I feel like that's how I've had it. Okay. Most. I have it on Do Not Disturb. Let me turn my Wi-Fi off. I was trying to get the, because I'm at my parents' house, I was trying to get the split screen right. Give me one second. So welcome. Welcome. Um, I'm just going to hey, have girl. you introduce yourself. Well, I'm going to do really briefly. If you guys joined on Monday or if you've watched any of my YouTube channel um, videos, I do a soul spotlight, which is pretty much highlighting different instructors and their whole journey. So today we have Liv, who's an instructor in Toronto. Um, but I want just introduce yourself and yeah, what group you were in and how long you've been doing this. Okay. Yeah. And then we'll get in the questions. Um, so Okay, so my name's Liv. My hair is very <laughs> rarely done, so I'm like taking advantage of this on screen. Look. Also, um, I have the same color on as you. Okay, cute. I got a whole little like, I'll leave it on black. set on. Look at your set. At you look nasty. so cute. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've been at Soul Cycle for almost three years now. Um, my soul journey is that I used to ride, actually, I took my first class when I was on vacation in San Francisco, visiting my best friend who was living out there. And I remember it so clearly because she was like, oh my God, we have to try this soul cycle thing. And I was like, I've heard of it. And like, anyways, and again, I was like on vacation. I remember she took me to my first class. I was somewhere near the back. I was, I mean, I've like grew up like doing competitive sports and dance. I was dying like literally I remember at one point leaning against the wall because I was beside the wall and looking over at her and being like this was your idea of fun um but anyways yeah got through the first class made it to the soulful cried and then um actually that's a lie I didn't cry during that soulful but I remember making it through the class and being like that was amazing I will do that again and then fast forward to like flight attendant live anytime I was like in the states near soul cycle I would like go to a class and then mm, wait, this is way before there was a soul cycle in Canada, but I was like getting in the route. It was winter time. And I kind of had this set route in Miami with my flight attendant life where like they had these like amazing, like 38 hour layovers where you like got there at night at like 7 PM. So you had time to like shower, get ready, go out for dinner, go out. And then the next day you have the whole day and then you leave the next like afternoon. So I would plan it. And then I would like the next morning, wake up, go to a soul cycle class by myself, go to the beach, read a book, just like have like a me day, which like was amazing. And at the time I was like living with my boyfriend at the time. So it was like nice to kind of like get away and like go have my little yeah. time. But that's actually where I like fell in love with soul cycle. And I specifically remember this. Yeah. I remember this specific class. I was kind of like in the middle of like a crossroads. I feel like I was like kind of in the middle of like a breakup and like a, like just like I needed a change and I took Allison's class which is super funny I've taken her class a couple times I really liked her in Miami um Coral Gables shout out mm -hmm. and I took her class and literally like did all the things you're supposed to do in class I like lived my best life that was the first time I cried that's why I had to correct myself that was the first time I like cried hard at Soul Cycle, and then like the go home I remember just being like yes <laughs> And I'll never forget, I walked out of the studio that day. I sat on the bench, like, right in front of Coral Gables. I don't know if you've ever been there. And I called my best friend crying. I was like, I had this, like, epiphany. I had this, like, spiritual journey in there. I was like, I need to work at Soul Cycle. And I remember sitting there on FaceTime with her, looking through, like, all the guidelines online. And it specifically said you had to be American or have an American visa, which I had none of. And they're like very challenging to get being Canadian, which is so insane because we're literally right. neighbors and I know. allies in every other way. But um, that happened in uh, November and then in, or yeah, November or December. And then in January, I remember getting an email saying that Soul Cycle was opening in Toronto. And I was like, ah, this is insane. And I actually applied for, like, before we had opened, um, I, like, sent in my application online. But to be fair, I had really hardly any riding experience because I'd only been able to ride whenever I was right. in the States. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually didn't hear back the first round, which is kind of funny because then I got scouted by Marvin that um, February or March, I was in Vancouver where there was not a studio and there wasn't one for a long time after that, but they had a pop-up at Equinox just to see what the clientele was in Vancouver. Cause they were thinking about opening 
one there. Um, I had no intention of auditioning. I just went to do the pop-up class, which is so funny because Marvin taught the class. The power went out at Equinox and he taught like the God that he is. He taught a 45 minute class with no music. It was oh like the God. coolest thing ever. There was no lights. They had some like weird ex like light that they got with an extension cord. And he taught a 45 minute class, just like humming and moving. It was such a cool thing. And then, yeah, at the end of the class, he came up and was like, you're doing the audition tomorrow, right? And I was like, oh, no, I didn't know there was an audition tomorrow. And he was like, so we'll see you at the audition tomorrow. <laughs> I was like, okay, here we go. And yeah, so then I, I did the audition. Um, and then I became a sole R because I already had the full staff for Toronto, which was opening that month. Um, so I was sole R. And then the next time there was a training group, I went into training, which was. Wow. I had no, I, I had no, so she, so Liv was in the group before me. So Liv was in 26. Yeah. I was, 26, like, yeah. I was like blanking. So we always feel like we're like long lost sisters because we're like, <laughs> she always calls me her pen pal. Yes. Um, because it's pal. funny. We just met over social media and we were like we would mm -hmm. totally get along and yes. I've and I've met Cam who Liv was like best friends with during training and like he's still best, best friends life. literally yeah. I was on FaceTime with him right before this Aww. Uh, um I so I had no idea that you found soul through being a flight attendant and like doing that and I also had well, no, no idea to be that, fair to be well, fair I found soul through like my LA friends and then mm -hmm. but it was like it never worked out timing the first like once upon a time and then I took class in San Francisco and then I took class in LA a bunch with LA friends and then wow. flight attendant Liv would do it whenever I was in the States, which then became like Miami was literally my like home studio because I would have like layovers where, yeah. there like twice a week. And then it was kind of like my me time and I like loved it. That's so perfect. I did not know. So I was a solar too, but I feel like you weren't in it. You were right? solar. Yeah. I didn't Isn't know that crazy? That. Yeah, I know. I feel like I, I also like I don't want to like speak too soon, but I feel like they may not do that anymore. Um, yeah. So people always ask me like when they watch my video when I'm talking about like my story, and they're like, "Well, how do you get that?" And I'm like, "Honestly, I have no idea." Well, when my um, one of my girlfriend Steph was actually the one that was oh, just wait, the most you told me that you're right. You're she right. became so a solar. I feel like yeah, I just I don't think... hear it that often. But... Well, I feel like. You know what? I feel like you don't hear about it that often, but I also feel like it wasn't really a thing you ever really heard about unless you were a soul R. Like I remember going into training and being like, was anyone a soul R? And it was like me and one other person, Brian actually. And, yeah. but I remember like everyone looking around being like, what's a soul R? Which I also didn't know what that was before right. I was one. That's true. But. Yeah. Mac, Mac in my group, he was also one. Okay. Anyway, so you actually answered basically my first two questions, which is amazing. Okay. Um, so kind of leading in talking about auditions, do you remember what you auditioned to your two songs? Okay, yeah. So I actually had two tech. Like technically, I had two auditions because I had the one in, the one in Vancouver, which was like I was like literally out with my friends the night before. I were, like I was there visiting my best friend who lives in Vancouver and was only there for three days. And she was like, "What do you mean you're not coming out with us tonight?" And I was like, "I have my dream job audition tomorrow. Like I'm, I'm not coming out. And don't wake me up when you guys get back." Uh, my first audition, I did, um. Mambo number five, which was hilarious. And I remember oh Marvin God. being like, you are hilarious. And the second song was um, the song, uh, what's this? Uh, it's like, I don't do yoga, never try Pilates. Is that Not your season? People. Uh, and it's like a remix. And I did it as a, it's actually a really wild remix. It's so crazy. I never play the songs I auditioned to, but I'll, <laughs> I'll post it after this conversation. Um, but it's like a remix and I did a climb with pushes to it. Cause it's like a, oh, wow. it's like a heavy, it's like a heavy track. Okay, okay. And then my second audition I did, which was when, like at the end. Right you got it. Yeah. Yeah. I did, um, hot in here by Nelly, which was yes. last. And I did, um, it's like a birdie, you know, birdie. Mm -hmm. She has like a remix I did as a seated flat with okay. uh, Spritz. Ooh, fun. I can't remember which Birdie song. I feel like it was called Words or something. But anyways, very random. But the, the I know. Hot well, people always ask that. It's very on brand for me. I mean, with what I play in, in class now. But yeah. Yeah. That's so fun. Hot in here is fast, too. That is a crack oh, honey, jog. It's, it is quick. I love the crack <laughs> jogs. They're my fave. <laughs> um, okay, so maybe this will answer that. So what's one of your favorite parts of class? So it doesn't have to necessarily be like, oh, the hill or oh, the go home. I mean, it can be. But yeah. like, what's or is there like a moment in class that's like your favorite? Honestly, like, I'm a, big, on the class. I'm a big uh, love crack jogs. But I have to say, like, soulful is my favorite part of class. It like, mm -hmm. it 
was my favorite part of class when I was a rider. And I feel like all of my front desk babies back home will attest to like, when I'm in the back room in the office before class, like I'm always like, okay, does this soulful flow with it? Cause like, I feel like that little like three, four minutes of time for me is like the most important because it's like, not maybe the most important, but it's like, you're still working out, but you're like, that's when you get like time for you to like reflect and like kind of enjoy the ride. I'm a really big fan of like, not really saying very much during soulfuls. Like I love when people, you know, talk and say their spiel, but I'm a really big fan of um, finding the songs that speak for themselves and just letting the room like vibe yeah. out to that. Um, mm -hmm. So I think I that, like I think, yeah. That's followed, I, I, like, I the soul saying, I followed by like a really amazing go home. Oh, like that right. combo is like, I agree. I'm very, I'm very similar in that sense too. Like you, yeah. I feel like some people like kind of just will play a soulful if it's like a song people want to hear just cause it's like, Oh, here's yeah. your you time. But like, I feel you when it's like, when I was a writer, that's the moment I appreciated the most. So I feel yeah. like I think about it a lot more me too, um, me too. as an instructor. Um, love that. So, um, <laughs> I also feel like I can't wait to come take your class because I feel like, based oh on God. all of our like I conversations agree. and FaceTime hangs, I'm like, I'm gonna love your class. No, I know I'm gonna love yours too, even your crack dogs, but it's fine. Um, so dogs. what is a go to song that you'll play in class that you'll just never get sick of? I know it's Ooh. so hard. <laughs> it's this is gonna make me emotional here. Uh, Booty Bounce Pop, the Apache remix is. I feel like that's like. Wait, there's an Apache you... remix oh, to that I song. Oh, I been. <laughs> I have the regular song, which is incredible. Oh, and send Apache... it your way. It is so good, and I feel like it's like. That's the song that everyone's like, "Oh, fuck, live!" Like, and it doesn't ever get old for me. And it's, it's just like a banger. Um, because Apache is a... like, oh my god. Yeah, me too. Um, it is a banger, and I feel like yeah, everyone knows i love that I'm song what's excited. another i feel like i have a i have a few that are like uh oh here she goes um <laughs> a funny song about a crack jog the song let me by riri which is super old um but it's very fast and it's very good funny story about it is it's so fast and it's also four and a half minutes long and it's another one that everyone's like oh here we go but um janet <laughs> in training she i put the song on and she was like that's too fast like she's like I bet you can't even do that song. Like kind of, you know, Janet being like mm -hmm. always challenging us. Um, so she was like, okay, like that, that was my song for the, the week of crack jogs. And she's like, all right, like we'll get up there and like do it. So I, she made me do it three times just to like prove that it was fast. And like <laughs> three times, four and a half minutes, play it afterwards. It's so goddamn fast. Oh and my I always God. make that I always make the joke in class where I'll be like, all right, we're going again round two. And it's like that's another classic live song, but also very fast. I'll have to play that. Yeah. That's I yeah. don't know if I don't it's know good, if I have my head. Double tap back can... body rolls. It's like it's good. It's good. Oh my God. Okay. So along with like all the music we're talking about, who is one artist or you can give a few that people will definitely hear in your class or a band or group or whatever. Ooh. Um, I mean, Drake. I feel like I have every remix of Drake there is out there. Um, yeah. The one I got from you last week, I'm obsessed with. I did not have that one. I thought I did. Anyways, love that. But yeah, you can always, I feel like my class is definitely, I have every kind of music in there, except for maybe country, which upon request, maybe I'll throw one in, but oh, you're brave. I can't do it. I can't do it. Um, but definitely Drake, definitely Apache. Is that how you pronounce that also? I say Apache. I don't know. I have no idea, but I yeah. I love some best. like grit in there. Who else do I love? I, I, I mean, I, you'll hear Beyonce and Riri in there, but I feel like I definitely go throwbacks with the, them. Um, okay, I agree. Just to, I'm trying to think of who else is always on the playlist. I figured you'd say Drake. I was like, oh well, there she is. Yeah, Drake. For sure. <laughs> Drake, Love that. Sure. <laughs> um, I know this. This is on the app, but I'm curious if it's changed because some people don't update the app. What's your favorite move in class on the bike? Um, it could be my... for you, or it could be like the move that you tell the class. Like sometimes I feel yeah, like yeah, yeah. I like the class doing something, and I it's not my favorite. Okay. Uh, my profile on the website says double tap back body roll, which I do really love. But honestly, I think. Around the world, for me, just, like, I feel like they let me, like, get my, like, ah, ah, <laughs> like, 
I love Around the World. Right before COVID, shout out Miss Class, but I was doing crack jogs with a slow Around the World okay. with a clap. So you go like, like down, push up, crunch, push up, bang. And like those just hit in class. Sometimes clapping really hits. Those... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it has to you really gotta play, um, You know the song, um, oh my God, why can't I think about it? It's only like three minutes into by Jada Kiss and it's called like, who, who's, I think it's called Who's Real. It's like, she's phony, she's fake. That's the type of people I hate. And it's like, if you real and you know what, clap your hands. You know that song? Okay, I know the song. Up. I've never played it. You should play it and when, sure. like, do the first round, like, no clapping. And then the second round, when the song claps, make them clap. Because if they have enough, it's okay. like, it's like a light fast jog. And people well, are like, like, but it's so it's fun. Twin. When, like, when the class, like, gets it on, you're like, oh, my God. But, yeah, the clap funny. gives me goosebumps. I do On God. You know the song On God? Yes. Oh God, do that yeah. song with slow around the world and the clap. And it's like, woo! <laughs> that's a lovely long jog. Yeah, um, it's good. Ooh, really that's a good. good song. Yeah, I was playing that a lot before um, all this happened. Fabulous. Okay, so this may be tough too. Give me three words that describe your class. Ooh, okay. Um, it's weird saying it about your own class because I want to be I know, like, fun it makes you... and amazing. <laughs> but you, can, you can, but I mean, I feel like you, like fun, you could say energetic, whatever. Okay, whatever I definitely comes will to say, mind. I'll say loud because I feel like whether you're in my like weird time, 930 and we're not, there's not that many people in there to like, it's just always loud. Um, I would say fun and loud, fun and fast. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. I, I do like I'm like a song to crack jog and have three crack jogs in every class <laughs> so I think I'd like your class but I think I would also be like oh my god um I love that correct I think, yeah, like all, I my, think... all my regulars that ride my podium like when I was injured they were all like you're trying to kill me I'm gonna have it like what are you doing they're like I'm not used to left foot now I'm crack jogging in here I'm like, but I yes, think no. your energy is what carries people through a fast song if mm. I had to if I had to guess um yeah I, obviously, I've never taken your class, but I know, and Dude. we've had people who've taken both of our classes, Yeah, which were different, but I feel like it just works. Anyway, uh, <laughs> like, if you like me, you'll like her. Yeah, um, there's instructors like that, though, where I'm, like, in different markets, it'll be like, oh, I took so-and-so's class, and, like, it reminds me of you, or vice versa, and, and then you hear the same people as you go, like, yeah. you, and, like, I know, like, Annie from Boston is always, like, you right, guys have yeah. similar, and like, just similar music and stuff. It's, like, oh, fun. Annie. Yeah, no, I hear, I think Annie and I have really similar music, too. Yeah. Um, okay, so what's your, like, favorite thing to do on your off day, or what's your, like, recovery? Ooh. Or do you use it as a recovery day? What do you do? You have, we all have that one off day, right? Or do you have two? I have two. Because you're, yeah, okay. Well, I have two from, like, Once Upon a Time Flight Attendant Life, which right, now right, is, right. like, fly to Dallas and back in a day and a half life, so there's that. Um, mm -hmm. But um on an off day I feel like I I want to say like I always take off days but I also like work out on my off days so um but what do I do on my off days literally for the last like seven months I feel like my off days have been travel um <laughs> right if you are new to me my boyfriend lives in Dallas and I have Thursday Fridays off but I teach the last class on Wednesday so I leave on Thursday morning at the first flight which is like 9 a.m and then I have to be back Friday night because I teach Saturday morning, which is very mm -hmm. hectic. But um, other than that, I don't know. I like to be outside. I, I love, I have a strong relationship with wine um, and <laughs> hang out with my friends. Um, yeah, it's cold in Toronto right now, but in the summer, you will almost always find me outside gallivanting around. I feel show. like you, I mean, this is what I get from through your social media. I feel like you're like a social butterfly and I feel like you're always like having fun and you're like out and about. <laughs> so you're, you have a YouTube channel coming, right? Yes. Okay. So oh, if you're watching, stay tuned. Subscribe. Because like you're, Honestly, you're, like you're, you're going to follow her fun works. adventures. Yeah. I was just actually on FaceTime with one of my girlfriends and I was explaining to her that like, I feel like what makes my life seem entertaining on social media is like, what is she doing? And I was like, but in a vlog, people want answers. Like, what is she really doing? And I was like, I don't know if I'm prepared for all of that information. I mean, people like, just love that. People love to be nosy. They love to know everything that you're doing. And I feel like what you're doing yeah. is 
fun to watch because you're entertaining like you said we've talked before I'm not like gassing either of us up but like we've both discussed like you can follow people on social media who just feel like they're so boring yeah. and it's like when you're real and crazy and like being whatever <laughs> like it's just so much more fun to watch yeah. um so yeah I'm excited for Liv's YouTube channel I'm okay excited back, too. back to soul cycle for a sec yes <laughs> um I, I know this may be hard because I feel like you're pretty open but what's one thing your writers may not know about you Ooh. um I know I feel like it's a hard one I don't know if this is like this isn't specific to like one thing that people like writers don't know about me but just on the note of like being in a job where you're always kind of like on I remember like last year going through like a breakup and like going through like some super tough times and like literally being like in that back office like crying and then being like sliding that door open and being like the show must go on and like just like in a note of like it's really an interesting job where like I mean everyone's taken who's taking class knows like the room literally depends on your energy so like there have just been so many times where you're like you know having an off day and you still have to go in there and hold the energy in that room which also I feel like my riders are so amazing and knowing that I'm always kind of on, well, I not kind of, I'm always on. I feel like they always know when, you know, there's days you go in and you're like, I need you guys to make some noise. But then like, there's days where I'll go in there and like, I feel like they can feel that I'm not, and that's the day they give all that extra love. And it's like a really special mm -hmm. feeling. But I think, I don't know, I'm trying to think of something specific that maybe people don't know about me in there. Um, I yeah, get really I nervous. I get really nervous before theme rides and challenges. I don't know why. Challenges 90 minutes is a long time. And as much as like I can hold space and I can talk to a wall, I get so nervous before those classes because like, it's just a long time to be in there. It, it's a really long time to hold space too. And you're worried yeah. about a lot of things. But also it's funny you say theme rides because I feel like I always stress about theme rides. Yeah, because I'm always like, I stress a lot when I make the playlist because I'm like, well, they want to hear this. This is what yeah, they yeah, want to yeah. hear. But I'm like, but yeah. I don't want to play that. It's like, oh, it's a weird thing where I'm like, <laughs> it's are they going to be thing. mad that I didn't play that? It's yeah, it's really interesting you say that because no one's ever said that before. And I'm like, oh, good. I'm not feeling yeah. it. feels weird. No, oh, that's, that's so funny. Yeah. I mean, but that's good because people want to know that. Like some people say something so weird about their past, but you're actually sharing like something writers don't know about our job, which is kind of cool. <laughs> um, so I, a few months ago, I asked people like what they want to know. So like one of them was the audition things that I said earlier, but this is another one. Um, obviously soul is super competitive. And what do you think like made you stand out and make, like made you be somebody that they wanted? I mean, obviously as like a recruit or, you know, obviously you're a successful instructor. So what do you think <laughs> got you um... in? <clears throat> that's funny that you asked this right now because I feel like recently everyone's kind of in reflection mode in COVID and I feel like I've had so many people like more than usual lately ask about tips and stuff for becoming an instructor and um I'm always super open to help with that stuff I think um well in terms of auditioning my tip is always pick a song which people don't understand the whole like pick a song that really speaks to you because You'll go in with a typical like, okay, I'm gonna do Upgrade You by Beyonce or something that like everyone hears in class. But if that song doesn't like resonate with you or like light you up, it's not gonna like help. So for uh, from the audition perspective, I would say like pick songs that like you vibe with in training, same thing. So if you try to do what other people are doing or song, even if it's a song that they're like, I don't know if that would work, then you can go in there and show them on a bike that it does. Shout out Let Me by Rihanna. Um, then it just comes across in your energy and then that comes across in the room when you're an instructor if you're doing the things that like work for you and then as far as being um successful as an instructor i feel like and this goes in my personal opinion this goes for anything in life i think just being true to who you are that sounds so cheesy when you say it but like i've seen people you know you go in there and you're trying to do other things or trying to mimic another instructor or trying to and that's, it just is so transparent and people can't connect with you if you're not yourself. And that's again, why I like really like lean into all the feelings at all times. If you're having a crummy day, if you're just like being like, you know, when you bump into people before class and after class, people want to chat with you. People want to know kind of what's up and vice versa. So I think if you can be true to who you are in the room and outside of the room and um, I guess another tip I would have that helped me at the beginning of being an instructor and I still to this day do it 
is being there like half an hour early and staying afterwards to just like chat with your people. People like invest a lot of time and money, but classes are expensive um, in Soul Cycle and in you and um, just like getting to know your people. And it makes your job so much more fun when you can go in that room and like show people out for like specific things, not just like, okay, I know your name, but just being able to be like, Karen celebrated her birthday last week. Yes, girl. You know what I mean? Just things. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think the biggest thing is just being yourself. I think that's what helped me like stand out in training and as an instructor now just being able to like lean into whatever you're feeling and yeah just being real with that totally. like I, it's, I always make the joke yeah. about me going through a breakup last year and playing irreplaceable for two weeks straight and playing like bust your windows as like the climb and being like everyone being like she's going through something <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's so true but, though and i mean and that's what people want to see and feel when they're in the room and also it's so funny because Maddie on Monday said the same exact thing and I feel like it sucks because like that's not easy advice for people to like implement yeah but it's also yeah. but it's it's the realest there is and that's all they care about um yeah so yeah that's a that's a great answer everyone just be yourself <laughs> um be yourself this is another one that um people ask they always want to know where we pull our inspo from when it comes to like those super motivational or inspirational speeches in class. Um, like you said, you, you give the soulful to them and I'm actually very similar. I've worked on that over the, like, you know, just over time. Cause like, yeah, whatever. I feel like I'd rather save a message for the go home than the soulful. Cause the soulful is like theirs. So where yeah, do you yeah, get yeah. that? Where do you, where do you pull that from? Ooh, um, I don't want to say something like from within. Um, but <laughs> I feel like even like, my day to day, like the accounts that I follow on Instagram that keep me like inspired and motivated. Like there's a couple, like, I don't know if you know, like rainbow salt or like just like different accounts that like really are like, we're not really strangers. I'm like the hugest fan of just right. like embracing all of your feelings. I feel like I see those enough throughout day to day things. And then when I'm in class, I'm honestly not a huge talker when it comes to like the motivational, not motivational pieces in class, obviously, but like, I'm not a big, like, um, Preacher, you don't preacher, yeah. Mm -hmm. Personally, yeah. Um, which also I think means when I do sit, take a second to be kind of preachy, I think that it it means a little bit not more, but because it, it's not something that I'm like out there preaching all of class. I think that yeah, when I do, for sure, have something to say. But really and truly, I feel like it just comes like from like the room. Like I feel like I get in super inspired mm -hmm. in the room when I can see who's in there. And again, that goes with like knowing who's in the room and like having personal relationships with people and. You know, if you have a class with new riders and you can feel that energy where people are like tr really trying and then like getting it and falling, you know, and I, like falling in mm -hmm. love with soul or like a really like experienced room and you have like milestones in there. Like I get inspired by like the room and um, and I know you'll know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you'll have a playlist ready to go and you'll be like, wow, I might say something right here during this song. And then like the class isn't feeling it, but then somewhere mm -hmm. else in the room somewhere else in class it'll be like oh wow that really like hit and you're just like inspired to say something so I think I think mine oh, just for sure. kind of yeah. comes from the room I know I've tried the route of being like okay it's my soul anniversary I'm gonna say something right here and that never really comes out sincere um yeah. so yeah I guess I think the room inspires me really I really mean that I I feel like I don't know how it is over there in in DC but I feel like soul the soul fam in Toronto is it's not small, but it's definitely like smaller than some of these other bigger markets. So I feel like my motivation and inspiration comes from the world. Yeah. Well, I feel like that's also a testament to you and also being good at your job is that that is part of it is being able to read a room and know yeah. what to do and what to say. And like that, I think that's a great answer. So yay. Thanks, Cal. <laughs> I'm like, uh. um, so kind of along with reading the room, um, people are always curious about this. And I think it's funny because they must notice, but, um, how does class energy affect your teaching? Um, okay. So does it, does it affect your teaching? You know, what, I, you know. I, it definitely, I won't lie and say that it doesn't. Cause obviously right. when you're like in a room that's full and everyone's loud, that like hypes you up, but I wouldn't say that it affects me in the opposite way. Like, I know that like, it is definitely challenging. I know people um, definitely have a tough time with it. If you go in there and like have seven people in the room and like people aren't really giving it to you. I feel like that would be, I don't want to say one of my like gifts, but I think that's something that I work hard to like 
I'm going to change the energy of the room <laughs> and yeah. like, I'm going to get you to make noise. And even if it doesn't um, actually change, I feel like keeping the energy up helps those seven people. Let's just say they come back and they're like, okay, she has 45 people in this room today and there's only seven people and her energy is still consistent across, which I That's think is also kind of helping me with these weird live workouts that I've been doing because Dwight yesterday, I, I taught a class for um, a beer company. They're right, having right, like right. a sponsorship thing with me, which is fun, but it's their Canadian Instagram account. So it doesn't have very many followers and there wasn't very many people in there. And he's like, I was watching you and he's like, you are literally teaching to no one. Like essentially, you know what I mean? Like even mm -hmm. when there's a hundred people on your live, it's still, you're talking to yourself. There's no one actually here. Um, so I think, I, I don't think it actually changes, but it does definitely change when people are giving it to you. But I think yeah. when people mm -hmm. aren't giving it to you, I'm still like, well, you're going to come back and I'm going to sell you on this soul cycle. If it's that the is last so thing true. I do. It, yeah. No, you made me laugh because that's so funny. I never really thought about that because I'm always like, oh yeah, like when the energy is like, we just, I feel like we have to work a lot harder um, yeah. when the energy is not the same as it would be in like a full crazy I mean sometimes you'll teach a full room and the energy is like oh my god like, I know like, yeah um but it is always it's always a nice reminder when someone like a rider or somebody will come up to you when it is a smaller class and they're like oh my god you were running around like crazy your energy yeah. is so amazing and then yeah. you're like oh yeah like that's the reason I still act like a crazy person Correct. when there's 10 yes. people in the room because it's helping them and they're still paying too, you know, anyway. Yeah. So that's well, I also great. think I'm so like, <laughs> have you seen the meme of like, I, I mean, it's definitely been on like soul relatable, but it's like the preacher, like about to speak. And it's like me anytime someone talks about soul cycle, I think yeah. in my brain, I'm so like, I mean, I'll talk about soul cycle anytime, any place, anywhere. But right. when I'm in my own room, I'm like, even if there's five people in here, you are going to love soul cycle as much as I do. And I'm going to like do whatever I can to get you to leave being like, Oh wait, that is why people love it so much. If it's like what I need to do. You know? Yeah, that's so true. Um, so with that, what do you, what inspires you most about soul? I know it's kind of cheesy, but is there something that just like comes to your head right away? Um, yeah. I mean, community is what comes to my head right away. And that I can go back all the way to like literally riding in Miami and like being at that studio that I was not from Miami and I would only go to every now and then. And they'd be like, you're from Toronto, right? Like live, like it's literally starting at the front desk. I feel like, again, I don't want to sound cheesy, but the hashtag soul people are the best people. It, it's so crazy. Like, you know, you sip the Kool-Aid wherever you work, but I really felt like that even as a rider once upon a time that it was like the attention to detail, even if it's like, just like something minor, like them being like, you're from Toronto, welcome back. And like, um, like I still have it, but like I remember buying my first Soul Cycle like retail and like getting that <laughs> silver bag. And like it's so funny putting yourself in rider mode, but like getting yeah. that silver bag and like going home and like wearing it like it was literally a Louis Vuitton bag. Like I would literally use it to go to the gym and be like, "Oh me, <laughs> like, <laughs> I got a Soul Cycle." Uh, but. Yeah, no, just like the people like everywhere. And then I, I feel that as an instructor now too, where like, you know, you have, you meet so many people and everyone comes. I think the coolest thing about it is, and I, I, I won't call them out, but I will never, ever forget um, when I was leaving Air Canada. And I remember someone being like, wait, like you're working at, you quit lift, like you're quitting just to be at SoulCycle. Like, aren't you just like a fitness instructor and I remember being like and you work at a bank and you're miserable every like it was just like I was yeah. so offended by the way that they tried to like knock what I do and like when I think about it like when I'm being in that room the people that come into those rooms I think is so awesome you have people from every walk of life you have like you have bankers you have like actors you have doctors you have just everyone from everywhere and they come in there into your space to like release and like let go of everything that's going on out there into your mm. room and I think that that's like it's just so cool and I like really do like love what I do and in in the most interesting way not that like I wanted COVID to happen but I feel like right before it happened I was like in a place you know everyone goes through their little like ups and downs with like work and life where I was just kind of like I don't know if this is like how much longer I'm going to be doing this. And like, I feel like I needed a little bit of this perspective shift of like taking a minute away from soul for a minute to be like, whoa, I like love my job and love doing what I do. And mm -hmm. just like needed that little 
reminder almost for a minute. <laughs> yeah, I feel like everybody needs that, but I'm glad that you got it because I remember us talking before. Um, <laughs> yeah. What's um, yeah. one misconception you think that people have about Soul Cycle? Um, hmm. I know there's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, which one to talk about? Uh, I don't know. I think there's a big misconception too with like, what spin class really means um especially like the standard like spin class that you'll get at like the gym or like um certain like online bike platforms that really are not the same as soul cycle and then again in that it also breaks down from instructor to instructor um i think that the biggest one with soul or i don't i don't even know i just think with spin class in general i think that people associate like oh, I just don't like spin and I'm like okay well like come to class once and then like let's chat afterwards um, yeah I guess that would be my biggest one I feel like other misconceptions would be like soul cycles like a cult or things like that yeah. where I'm like maybe not wrong but like a happy positive <laughs> one <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, yeah uh, no but that is true like just when people say spin like it's just it's so much more than that yeah. um so that that's a good one I think um so if you weren't at Seoul, if you weren't a Seoul instructor, what do you think you'd be doing? Ooh. Um, I feel like I can't say TikTok star because I've been at Seoul for <laughs> too long and that's too new. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'd probably maybe still be flying. Um, the yeah. big reason why I kind of left flying was the perks of the job are obviously being able to travel a ton. And when I first started flying, I was flying for six years, but I used to do a ton of layovers, which was super fun, like that nomad life. Um, but when I started at Seoul, it was kind of like, okay, well, you only have two days a week to fly. So mm -hmm. it was kind of taking up that without really much time to do layovers and stuff. Um, and I picked Seoul because I love it. But yeah. I don't know. I'd probably still be flying. Um, I think I would do something with fitness one way or another. I, I grew up, like, doing competitive sports and dance and gymnastics and all of that jazz. Um, and, I mean, it says it in my Seoul bio, but I mean it that, like, the feeling that I used to get after Seoul – um, was like, I slowly translated that into being something that I wanted to do. Like people leave that place, leave it feeling so amazing, whatever kind of day you walk in there having. Um, and I wanted to be on the other end of giving out that feeling. So I feel mm -hmm. like I would definitely be doing something fitness like related, that. but yeah, something. Yeah. But I knew, I knew it was going to be soul. And it's, it's so crazy. Like those quotes, like when you look back, like, don't forget about the time where you dreamed about being where you are now. Mm -hmm. Um, we got to really remember is that. True. It really is yeah. true. And I remember that day in Miami and like how bad I wanted to be a soul cycle instructor. And like, even the instructors, like they make the jokes about it, how like your soul cycle instructors are like, I just remember like being in the change room with Allison and being like, Hey, <laughs> like, Hey, I just took your class. It was good. <laughs> like just yeah, that know. feeling of like, it's just cool to be here on the other end of it now. And yeah, yeah. it's awesome. The, the feeling yeah. doesn't get old of like, um, th teaching those classes and like the messages you'll receive or the people that come chat with you after class just being like hey I was going through it today and like yeah and that's just... when you know it's more than spin correct your yeah. misconception um yeah. for sure so I feel like you probably get a lot of new riders because I don't know. We all, a lot of us do, but, um, mm -hmm. I know you're super popular. So what's <laughs> some advice that you would give to a new rider? Ooh, what's okay, like the yeah. top thing that you would tell them before they even come in the room? Okay. The top thing that I like to remind them is that my first class, I was literally like falling over against the wall. And so like, don't be discouraged. Number one, I feel like it's definitely overwhelming your first class. And I like to be pretty transparent about that. Like, your first class is going to be like challenging whether, you know, I know some people come in and they're like, okay, well, I was a dancer, so I know rhythm or I am an iron man. So I know how to ride a bike or I'm, you know what I mean? It doesn't have anything to do with any specific thing you've done in the past. Um, I always say like, give it five classes before you entirely write it off because um, whatever the energy in the room is, the choreo, the, timing of things the flow like your first class it's overwhelming there's a lot going on especially when you are surrounded by people that do know what's going on it's right. a little bit intimidating when you're like okay the front row's tabbing it back and the, this row's doing jumps and the, you know what I mean where it's like 
I always say like, take your time. If you need to sit, sit, sit the whole time. If you want, just catch the beat. You know what I mean? But don't be discouraged and come back another class. Cause you will love it. <laughs> and I have people that are like, okay, so yeah, I didn't love it the first class, but I love the energy in the room. And then the second class they are like, okay, I'm starting. And then by like third, fourth class, they're like, so I bought a 10 class pack and I brought my whole family. And you're like, and I knew that would happen. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, it's good not to get discouraged and just know like everybody had a first class. I think yeah. that's really good. Yeah. Um, okay. So we only have like two more. So um, what's one thing, like if someone could just take one thing away from your class when they leave, what do you want it to be? Um, one thing. Like the major thing that when you're, when someone walks out of Liv's soul cycle class, what is it you want them to like feel or take with them? I think I just want them to feel like good about like any, like just feel good. That's the biggest thing. And I, I think that's all you can really ask for from people to leave feeling good. And like, I know when I leave and I'm like all endorphin high, I'm like ready to take on the world. And so I feel like that's what I want people to leave feeling good, accomplished and whatever that means to people, you know, some people come in and they're like, okay, I want this many calories. Some people come in and want to, I want to cry during the soulful. Some people come in and just want to get through the class and like do all the things. So whatever feeling good, means I want people to leave class feeling that way yeah no that's good okay so this one's always fun because I like just hearing about it um who are two influential people like on <laughs> your soul journey so two people who have like impacted the way things have gone for you it can like be soul? within it can be okay. within soul like it can be you know people from training or whatever it can just be somebody who's been like a constant people answer this different ways so whatever okay. whatever you think <laughs> um two yeah can I say three you can yeah <laughs> not okay. allowed um okay so first off will be Tyrell Deshaun because um when I first started riding in Toronto I like had ridden with all the instructors but truly ties like my soul mom and he I remember he saw my name he's like oh you're the soul R and he was like, all right, podium. And I was like, oh, and just used to like literally kick my ass in class. And like, we'd be doing like runs and he would like crank my resistance and be like, you're going to training, right? And I'd be like, oh, okay. And like truly like, just like got me ready for training and had no shame about like putting me on the podium with like 10 turns of resistance doing crack jogs and runs. Oh and, Lord. Um, just like really was cheering me on the whole way. And when I got to training would like FaceTime me and help me make playlists. And he just like really was a great role model and helped me out a ton. Um, so yeah, I have to give him credit for that. Second person. Okay. Well this, yeah. Second person was, it was just like, you know, someone can say one thing to you and it changes the whole game. My feedback throughout training, um, had a lot of just like, not that I was stiff, but just like, I need you to like loosen up a little bit. And it's funny because I'll see riders who are amazing riders come into class and I'll be like, I need you to get a little messier with this. And Karen in New York, who like, everybody loves Karen, like love, yeah, love Karen. Uh, I went to her class. Someone was like, go take Karen's class. You're going to love it. I went to her class and um, she was like, oh my God, you're in training. Like, tell me how it's going. What's your feedback? What do you need to do? So I took her class the first time after class. She was like, I was like, oh yeah, my feedback is that I need to like, let go a little bit. Like I, I feel like yada yada, whatever. I explained to her what my feedback had been. She, I took her class the first time and she was like, okay, this is going to sound weird maybe. And when I used to ride, I was like a slicked ponytail. Like, I can't even have anything touching my skin. I need it. She was like, let your hair all the way out. And I'm thinking like, First of all, I'm soaking wet with sweat. Like, I'm going to look like a mess. She was like, let your hair out. And she's like, I'm not kidding. It'll just let you, like, just try it and see what happens. And I remember thinking that was weird advice. And then going to drills, like, the next day and, like, putting my hair in, like, a half up, half down. So I could still, like, it was out, not blinding me, but I could move around. And I don't know why that transition, that little tiny bit of advice just, like, changed the game for me and I just understood and it, I remember being people being like you ride with your hair down sometimes and it was it was just the smallest thing that helped me just like unleash and I think that like really changed the game for me in a lot of ways um and then I remember the next time I took her class she like put me on the podium and was like take your hair out and I was like Woo. and it just I don't know what it did to not being like stiff but it just 
it did something different for me as a whole. And I, and then I take her class. I tell everybody that goes to New York to take her class. It's just, she's like a lioness out there on the bike. And I feel like somehow oh, when I would like let my hair down, which I can't always teach class with my hair down. I teach like four classes a day. There's no way. But oh. I, when I first started teaching, I wear my hair in a little half up, half down thing. And I, I feel like it, now I just am able to. <laughs> That's so funny. I love yeah, that. But it weird. is, I think everybody had like a weird like turning point and it yeah, was like something super small in training. And that was it for you. Let your hair down. Love that. And then Mama Mel, obviously she is just, the god of all gods um i i don't know not, not I, people in toronto know this but like i thought I, I didn't think i was gonna pass training there was like i had went through like a roller coaster in training of like just like i thought i was doing okay and then having my first community ride first community ride was good second community community ride i got like ripped apart by mama mel all things that like i took so like i i feel like i am pretty good at receiving feedback but I remember being like, I don't know if I'm going to pass this thing. And then one day she like took me into one of the back rooms downstairs and was like, sit down. And I was like, she's sending me home. And she just gave me like the pep talk of like a lifetime where she was just like, you know what you're doing, you know what you're capable of doing. And like, I need you to just do that. And just, we had like, we went through some songs. She's like, I need you to like, and we just, you know, Mama Mel, I feel like she is like, the god of all gods is all I feel like I can say she just knows she, she knows the right things to say to motivate and like really just like inspire and yeah I love her oh she's the best okay so right now I'm gonna turn the comments back on when I ask the, you to finish this last one just so people if you're listening if you have questions for Liv start sending them <laughs> in I want to know um, and then for my last question I just want you to finish the sentence it's so corny but okay. to me soul cycle is whatever family home Aww. or home honestly just home I think that's like the biggest thing because home also means family so home yeah I really feel like it, it is just my home and I feel like it's <laughs> Cam that second <laughs> I know, like... uh, <laughs> he was sitting there for all the feedback um yeah I feel like soul cycle is home and that's like honestly what it is and I love that I can go into the soul cycle here in Dallas and like I went into this the first time I went to the soul cycle here rider came up to me and was like you're live right i was like ah, yeah <laughs> like, it i love riding in other markets i love that i love being able to like go to new york and walk into hq and like give everyone a big hug and how like the training happening there just makes you like so involved with every step of the way um and yeah i just yeah soul cycle really is home and i feel like that's my favorite part about why i love the job so much <laughs> uh, it is the best i mean everybody loves lib i can't wait to like number one meet in real life because this is getting out of I control know. <laughs> <laughs> we're going really on like our cool. three-year friendship anniversary and like it's not okay <laughs> i know it's so crazy i remember seeing you before you went into training on because of lorenzo so yeah. i don't know like that's how you popped up and I was like, oh, my God, this girl is so pretty and so cool. <laughs> and then, um, I don't you. know. We, it, yeah, you're welcome. Okay, so here's a question um, for you, Liv. What makes Soul stand out from your competitors? Um, okay, and I mean this with literally no shade. I think every other studio is, you know, everyone has their, um, everyone has, all studios have their perks. Um, I think what makes Soul stand out is that Soul was the original of this concept and all of the studios that have come since, as great as they are, stem from the original and like whatever shade people want to throw, it's like, that's, there's no arguing that. And like, that's kind of what it is. Like Soul Cycle was the original, like dark candlelit choreography, you know, spin studio. So everything that came after and put a different tweak on on it is great but you can't deny where you came from and it all came from soul so i think that's pretty cool being in the og spot i think that's accurate um you can handle this because you were talking about i mean obviously these questions are for you um how do you handle criticism she said she felt like she would just cry um that was hard in training but we training, still get criticism yeah. outside of it i just feel like sure. training was um mentally yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think the biggest thing about handling criticism in training anyways, I mean, in life, that's a whole other conversation, right, right, right. but in training, I think the biggest way to handle criticism is not taking it as criticism and taking it really as feedback. And then 
internalizing it how you will like you know you'd sit there after a community ride and they would literally like you would be bawling and they're still going at you um but is really like taking apart trying to separate it from being personal and being like okay i want to be an amazing soul cycle instructor and i want to be you know find find out the real root of like what they're saying and how you can change that and it's just like it's not to personally attack you they want you to be successful in this career so just Sometimes you also need to step away from feedback for a minute. I know I'd cry hearing it. I'd leave and cry at home about, and then you, they literally set it up. So someone else is taking notes for you so that you can listen and read it and take it in later. And then going back and being like, okay, you know what? I do need to do that differently. And I did take this in a personal way, but this is what that meant. And just realizing that they really do just want the best for you. Um, and they're only telling you these things so that you can succeed. Um, and so, yeah, I, I feel like it's also, sometimes as we get older with this job it's also a little bit tougher to hear feedback i know um hearing feedback as you get more senior with this job is is a lot tougher i would say because yeah. when you're new and you're at hq and you're like okay yeah, yeah and then it's interesting being like okay i've been an instructor for three years and now you're or like you know someone else says something and you're like i don't know if i agree with that but i think always um a life lesson would be just like being open to feedback. I'm always open to feedback as long as you have something to go with. You can't just say like, I don't like your class, you know, but yeah, if you have something totally. to say, I've had riders be like, I love this, but, or like, you know, I think that's my biggest, I'm always open to feedback, whether yeah. I agree or not, I'm always open to it. All right. So I don't want to keep us on here for forever because it's literally been almost an hour. Um, so <laughs> we can, we can do these last two that I see and then we'll get out of here. Okay. Right. So what was it like to transition from a rider to an instructor? It's a good question. Um, I think that uh, in Toronto, I think for me, I want to say it was kind of an easier transition than I've seen other people that have come to Toronto in the past because I was a rider there. So like mm -hmm. I was a rider in Toronto. I rode six days, seven days a week. I knew all the front desk staff. I knew all of the like, you know, regular riders in there. And then again, with like the instructors making it so known that I was about to go into training and being like so awesome with like cheering me on for that journey. I think it was awesome going into training and coming back to a community that I was a part of. And then they wanted to support me as an instructor. Whereas I will say, I feel like it's a lot tougher for people that audition from an outer market or from an outer, you know, I wrote in a different kind of studio and then now I'm auditioning. I go into training. Sorry, there's construction next door. <laughs> so, um, I was just like waiting and waiting. I was like, is that me? <laughs> no, there's construction next door and they like send it. Anyways, I will say it's a little bit, I can see the challenge and the struggles that people have when they didn't ride at Seoul and they go into training and they come back and people are kind of like, who are you? We've never met you before. Not that they aren't able to transition in, but I think it was a lot easier because I wrote at Soul Cycle, and I, again, I have a lot of people asking questions that are like, "What do I do?" I'm like, maybe start with riding here, <laughs> and then, yeah, you know. I think I think I mean I'll like kind of follow up with that just because I feel like I get asked this a lot. I think, mm -hmm. and I feel like I always tell people this that like if you're a rider and you love Soul Cycle so much, yeah. and you're like. And you're like, well, I love it so much, so I want to make it my job. It just really has to be a lot more than that because yeah. I had many conversations with instructors before I became an instructor being like, it is different. And instead of like it being like your happy place and it's this sense that like you get to go let go and forget yeah. everything, like now it's your job. Yeah. So like you really have to love it in a different way and be ready for like it to feel like you are on the other different. side yeah yeah so like I just want I always want people to be aware of that because like there's so many people who are like I want to audition I want to do this because I love it but it's like it's just a lot more than that but yeah different yeah um okay and then this is just a quick little last one it is a cute question though um what's the hardest <laughs> choreo for you to master and teach Oof. what do you okay think? I have an interesting answer for this but I know he's a controversial character at Soul Cycle, but I was a big fan of Akin. I still am. Um, his choreography is insane and it's so fast. And um, I think that I have, I definitely love speed in my room. So I know every time I've taken his class, um, I like to come home and go in the studio and try to practice different variations of quick choreography. But, um, Number one, it's hard to learn. But number two, it's hard to teach because, um, you know, when you're in a room that like 
for example, his groom at Soul Cycle was always very specific. His riders, you know, people mm -hmm. know what they're expecting. Whereas I feel like I like to be open to new riders, not to say that he's not, but I like to be to be a room where people can come in their first class and not feel super discouraged or like things are mm -hmm. super challenging. So it's hard to, we're going to try this super crazy fast thing that I'm going to try to verbally explain during this class where it's like, you know what I mean? It's like, okay, hey guys, we're going to do this, 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 this. If you're new, you don't have to do that. You can do a modified version, which is this, this, and this. But also if you want to try it, we're going to do this, this, and this in three, two, one, let's go. <laughs> and then demo it and then do it. <laughs> um, so I think that just anytime you're introducing, I think the, the answer is just anytime you're trying to introduce something new, it's hard to be like, hey, if you want to try this, this is what we're going to do. And if, you know, anything yeah. that's not easy to explain. Yeah. I almost wish I... sometimes you could teach like, I, I not to like disclude anyone, but like we used to have Soul 101, which was for sort of newer people to try out. Right. And then mm -hmm. I wish that there was almost like another class where you know going into it, like this is gonna be, we're gonna try new crazy, just so that people kind of know instead of, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, for sure. I'm trying to think for me what the hardest was, to be honest, it's really basic, but for, I don't know why I struggle with this, like literally through training, fast dogs, crack dogs, whatever, that's what we call them on my left leg have yeah, always yeah. been a struggle for me. Um, and I'll never, I was traumatized in training <laughs> week. I'll never forget it. Week three was my worst week. I would literally right. be crying. And I was like, I'm the worst person here. I can't ride this bike. What am I doing here? <laughs> and I remember <laughs> I'm not going to say the training person who it was. I'll text you later. Who was standing in front of me and I was like, literally going like this. And I was like, <laughs> yes, I, I was know. Like, I feel like I'm doing that. Like, I don't understand what's going on. And yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think that people put a lot of pressure on themselves in the fast songs. Cause like you're one, it's one thing to get the pace on a fast jog. Yeah. It's another oh, thing yeah. to get the pace and then do choreography on top Correct. of it. So for me, honestly, mastering the left leg fast crack, was the right. hardest like once you're on the pace like yeah. you add in the choreo and like if you feel like you're a step behind you just have to like I always tell people I'm like you literally just have to like speed up for a second and get back yeah. on it yeah. but um yeah I don't know that's I seated <laughs> that was, was seated like, flat oh. I feel like seated flat seated left, left leg like... flats I also Ooh. broke my left leg when I was younger so oh, I swear to God. God I swear that that like my left leg is just weaker. It feels, right, I mean, right, I right. still hate riding my seat is on my left leg. It, it hurts. It doesn't right. hurt. It just doesn't feel as natural as it does yeah. on my right. But I think it's because as a rider, I was so strong on my right leg. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. I feel that. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so whew, that was literally an hour. Whew. I I, could live. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I was like, oh, this, I'm going to turn these off really quick. Actually, no, I won't, whatever. I just hate that your face may be blocked on the YouTube because like for everybody watching, um, it's been a process for me. Obviously, I interviewed Maddie on Monday, and I'm just now getting her video to YouTube today because I've had to do a lot of saving, downloading, editing, yeah. re like all this stuff um, because it doesn't let me save this to mm -hmm. my phone. I know. But I figured it out. So this will be on my YouTube channel, hopefully, Woo! at the end of the weekend or this week. And then obviously, keep a lookout for Liv's um, YouTube channel as well. If you're here and you don't follow Liv, 100%. Go here and go follow me. Click, click, click that <laughs> and if follow you're here, button. You don't follow Callie. Follow her. Oh, thank you. What's <laughs> up, everybody? Um. So yeah, and Liv and I are going to maybe like one day we'll do like a dream team teach. That would be so fun. Oh my god, but, that'd be amazing. I feel like we also need to film our in person meet because I oh, feel like for sure. we are we'll always be just social media connected. <laughs> I know we are, but it's gonna be awesome. So keep up with Liv with everything she's doing. She's killer. Okay. Check her out when Soul opens back up. And thanks for watching, guys. And thank yes, you for being so here, nice Liv. to everyone. Kelly, thank you for having me. You're amazing. You were incredible, <laughs> of course. All right. Okay, well, I love See you. I'll see you later. soon.